If you've been feeling like even your best sword skills are missing something on the damage department, don't know how to use derived skills like horizontal square, or simply put, if that large fucking dodo bird 5 levels below you is giving you more trouble than it should, chances are you're skipping a huge part of the combat depth and efficiency in Sword Art Online Alsatian Licorice. Welcome everyone, it's me GamerTurk and today we'll talk about some combat features that will significantly boost your combat and damage dealing capabilities including skill connect, derivation skills, sacred arts, animation cancelling actions and most importantly working with your allies which is much simpler than you may think and help you get much more efficient and powerful in combat scenarios. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Sword Online Alsatian Licorice content and news coverage. So, the first bits are gonna be some of the core concepts just as a refresher, starting with the sword skill that is executed at the end of a default attack chain, this much you probably all know as well as how to execute sword skills from your palette, the game teaches you all these as early as the first combat scenario against the little dodo bird over in Rulit. However, then it starts throwing so much tutorial and VN scenes at your face in chapter 1 of the game that you probably forgot or didn't even bother reading these tutorials, some of which are not very clear in the first place. First off, skill types. Now there are regular sword skills which simply initiate an action the moment you use it, things like vertical or horizontal as early game examples, nothing to elaborate on these, you use the skill, the skill is launched immediately. Second type, charge skills, your first experience with these will either be Warple Strike or with Snake Bite, both of which function <laughs> differently on their own despite both being charge skills. Now these can get more powerful as you hold them down to reach higher tiers, provided you have unlocked higher tiers of course, and in the case of Warple Strike it even lets you aim the ranged skill manually for precision. Or in the case of Snake Bite, Charging allows you to pick the most opportune moment to strike the enemy with that skill for the highest chance of afflicting a status ailment on them. For the latter type of charging skill, it's not always a guarantee that the ailment success percentage will always rise until it hits the highest point. As mentioned, it only allows you to wait for the most opportune moment based on your own judgement. Sometimes the rate can even go down if you miss the opportune moment. But secondly, again, another trait of these second type of charging skills, unlike Warple Strike which allows you to aim while standing dead still open for enemy attacks, these ones also allow you to sidestep while holding them when charged so you can potentially remain safe and not get staggered while you wait for a moment. The third type, derivation skills, can be a little confusing because its visual cue appears like a skill connect which we'll talk about in a short bit. Derivation skills are skill upgrades very much following the logic of these sword skills that existed all the way since Aincrad. For example, you start with vertical, then unlock vertical arc and eventually vertical square. And Licorice handles these wonderfully yet fails ridiculously on the explanation part. The game states perform an additional input and yes that is correct, but it's incredibly vague for someone who has no clue how and when to actually perform it or which additional input, so <laughs> most people will probably get stuck doing the regular vertical over and over. However, if you pay attention during the use of vertical for example, you'll see a huge bright shine in the middle of the skill rather than at the end, the one that's for skill connect. This mid skill shine is your cue to activate vertical again, which allows you to progress into vertical arc, launching you high into the air and hopefully your enemy too. Once you're up in the air, if you have vertical square unlocked, you will immediately see another big shine before your eventual landing. If you input another vertical there on time, your vertical arc will transform into vertical square for even more damage potential and effects. Now, while my example ran on vertical derivations, each skill and derivation has their own distinct timing. For example, for horizontal, horizontal arc and horizontal square derivation, I found the best way to simply be spamming the skill button because especially horizontal square Q has an incredibly narrow and early timing, however if you spam during vertical, you'll break your derivation before you achieve it due to correct timing being later than usual. So observe the skills you're using and find out where that derivation timing lies. 
But I have talked about the skill connect shine there at the beginning. If you played Hollow Realization, it works exactly the same, albeit a little bit more limited. You won't be pulling 30 skill connect chains back to back here. The game starts with a limit of 2 and you can slightly increase the chain count in the future. But for those who do not know, skill connect is basically chaining 2 skills back to back to eliminate the post skill delay animation. Again, canon to the series. What you're looking for is the small shine at the end of a sword skill and at that moment you simply input another sword skill to chain into it immediately. When successful, you will see the little blue shine become a bright yellow followed by the execution of your chain skill. However, be careful, it appears to be that you cannot chain from certain skills into certain other skills. While it is rare, this limitation exists, it is something you should keep in mind and explore what you can chain into from which skill and what not. The limitation does not include things like charging into regular into charging skill for example though, so you can use a charging skill as your second link in the chain, aim around however long you want and after using it, chain back to whatever you want to, provided that skill itself is chainable into from your current stance. Another important tip is the dodge action. Whether you're in a skill connect chain or just use a single skill as a single skill chain, the final skill used in any chain will cause your character to suffer a post skill animation delay, which will most likely lead your enemy to land the hit on you. I have seen many people complain about how slow the recovery from skills are, however, that is kind of the point, because there's a mechanic that gets you out of it early. Using the dodge button as part of that chain, you can break out of the animation delay instantly if you manage to time it exactly where the skill connect shine would be. And yes, this works even if you already used max amount of skill connects in a chain, it basically is a plus zero chain that makes you instantly dodge and return to action, constantly keeping that movement going, which is vital to stay on top of the enemy as well as keep increasing your damage multiplier on the enemy. The best way to think about all of these combat concepts is that every single feature is very modular, which is a brilliant system in my opinion. So many individual concepts working together in all ways imaginable. For example, you don't even need to complete a full derivation chain to skill connect into a different skill. For example, you don't even need to complete a full derivation chain to skill connect into a different skill at the end. You can simply finish executing vertical arc, the second derivation of vertical as usual, instead of derivating into vertical square and once you land, the skill connect shine for vertical arc will appear for you to use. These are all individual feature modules that interact with each other, so stay on your toes and pick the most optimal way of action. For example, if you see an enemy charging a big attack, it may be in your favor to cut your vertical derivation early and connect into a dodge after the initial movement to step away, instead of you know trying to execute the derivation all the way, only to get knocked back by the monster who was already charging. And these combat modules perfectly interact with the Sacred Art system too. In fact, look at the Sacred Art's effect and you will see it is actually encouraged with granting bonus benefits when used in chains where you inflict certain status ailments, followed by an instant burst of Sacred Arts. What I recommend here is that you develop certain chaining habits on your own based on your own playstyle. For example, I usually go Sonic Leap, Vertical Square and Snake Bite. Vertical Square's vertical arc portion has a chance of launching the enemy in the air and Snake Bite has a potential to cause the enemy to go into a hazardous state, but even if it doesn't, the skill chain finishes before the enemy can land, so what I can do in this case, if the enemy was launched by vertical arc and was not stunned by my Snake Bite, is that I immediately throw my thermal element that I generated in preparation before starting the chain and, as you can read from the Sacred Arts description, Thermal element arrow shape discharge fatalizes launched enemies, effectively maximizing my chances of putting the enemy in a weak state, maximizing my damage potential in the process. But those were all things on the individual level, basically what you can do solo on a single character. However, even doing these you'll feel like you're lacking significant power and you wouldn't be wrong. After all, you can have a party up to 4 people. Well, you're trying to only use a single character in a reasonable manner. 
Now, don't get me wrong, this won't make you suddenly quadruple your damage to steamroll everything, but it will certainly allow you to survive more reasonably and deal much better amounts of burst damage when you pull it off here and there. And that feature is party commands via the party command palette. This feature was very basic in the old games, however with how it was significantly upgraded in Alsatian Licorice, it is a massive key to success. First off, dictating a mindset for your party members. This is absolutely vital. Well, at least having one person take the aggro away from your main character is vital at the very least. The other characters, I have found to not matter all that much, even when I picked options that would make them more active in combat, only rarely seem to work. But again, the point of this is that you should absolutely have one character set to taunt enemies at all cost. The rest, you can generally pick to be helpful with buffs or chains, it doesn't matter all that much. The fact that someone will take aggro away from you will allow you to execute sword skill chains much more reliably without being broken due to a stagger. And on top of this comes the real damage booster. You gotta attack together with your allies and result in chain bursts. These are effects that you may remember from earlier games in different names that grant bonus damage or effects on the enemy. In the old games, these were achieved specifically through lengthy ally chains. In Alessation Liquoris, all you need to do is use a skill at the same time with at least one partner, although the more partners the better. You have two options for this, one is on your personal attack palette, there's one option that calls for your allies to use skills together, however it has quite the cooldown once you use it once. The more reliable one is once again simply initiating skills manually on your partner menus. Once you open the partner palette, the time slows down a lot, so while not infinite, you have more than enough time to pick whichever skill you want those characters to use, and then once you're out of the partner palette, immediately execute a skill of your own to achieve this and get a major boost of damage, as well as potentially increasing your damage multiplier on the enemy above certain thresholds. And just to make it even better, once you see your damage multiplier is high enough, just use a finisher art for further damage to take advantage of that high multiplier. But that is all I got for you today, hope the basic information as well as the slightly bit more advanced part will allow you to have a better time against large dodo birds as well as other more challenging enemies. Do subscribe and hit the bell icon for more Sword Art Online Alsatian Liquorice coverage and guides and follow on Twitter and Facebook for faster news access. Medina merch is available on my Teespring page and a huge thanks to all my patrons and channel members as always. Until next time, stay cool.